Hey, Rob, uh, just a heads up, the video function is disabled, for me at least. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Uh, I don't know if you, heard, if you heard me. Hey, Ann, it's Peter. Uh, I think the video functions on the um, panelists are disabled. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, well, I can hear you. I can hear you. Hi, Peter. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays to you Thank too. You. Did you Mine says that? unable to start video. Hmm. Let me fix that. Thanks, Rob. There we go. Hi. Hi. Hey, Carolyn. Hi. Hi. So I had a bit of trouble getting on, but I'm good now. That's okay. I, think, I hope. <laughs> oh, yeah. I look like I'm in the dark. I'm in a different <laughs> part of my house. <laughs> I got booted from our office. Um, it's okay. Yeah, I know how that feels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like I'm in like a dark corner I, I, am. <laughs> I am in the dark corner. <laughs> this meeting just occurred today. So. Hello everyone. Hey Henry, how you doing? Nice to Hi see Peter. You nice to see you too. Yeah, thanks. Hi Anne. Hi Carolyn. Hi Henry. Hi. We will do uh we'll do introductions in a bit, Anne, but here are obviously our two new committee members. Yeah, hi Caroline. Hi Henry. Hi Anne. Hi Anne. We won't ask them to take notes today. <laughs> Peter, I can't take notes today. I That's moved right. less than a week ago and I don't even know where I am in this house. <laughs> oh, did you move? Where, where did you? Uh, you I, I'm Palmer. I'm on Palmer. 708 Palmer. Oh, great. So, I'll take notes today. Thank you. I sent my notes. You yeah, got, okay. I made a couple of minor edits and then sent them around to everybody else. Okay, I know I was um, midst packing when I was doing the notes and then it was, uh, I'm sorry. No, I, think they're, I think they're fine. No, 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 I didn't even, I just put my, I should have said additions. I didn't mean. Oh, that. okay. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. It wasn't my best note taking skills last, <laughs> last <laughs> time. About it. I, they were nice and concise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm, just, I'm probably gonna, um, I'm gonna type them up while we're talking though. My schedule has been just, as I'm sure others too, it's like the ability to have Zoom meetings. It's just, hey, Sarah. Hi. It's just constant. I'll have seven hours of Zoom meetings a day. It's a huge man, someone's <laughs> got to work too. It's like, what happened to actually working? Like, I get that that's, trust me, it's work and I'm tired after it, but it's uh, just desk time has become a thing of the past. It's bizarre. Or uh, it's not that we're always at our desk, right? But being able to just work on something is like, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I was pulling one of our boats out of the water this morning. Of course, the battery was like totally zapped. So I had to jump it and I got it out of the water before the snow kicked in, which is nice. <laughs> hey, Brendan. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Good. So I I'm don't, gonna, I have... I'm going to put everybody on, uh, start broadcasting through the village's YouTube. Uh, oh, sure. That's great. Well. Thank you. Thanks for the heads up too. I haven't heard from Doug, uh, Brendan. I think you were you mentioned maybe talking to him about Thursdays. Yeah. If you haven't yet, no big deal. Or Wednesdays. Do you know if he's joining though? 
Uh, I don't think he's joining because this time can it's be still like yeah an internal okay. company meeting, which yeah. he cannot get out of. So yeah, I think we're going to change it. So that would be one of the things we do today is Great. talk about a better time. Uh, so who else? Victor's not going to make it today. Um, so our, our trustee can't make it today. Victor's pretty good about making it, but he had a, I think there's a trustee meeting at 320, which probably kept him. So other than that, are we missing anyone else? I don't want to start too early. I think we might be good to go. Is Kyle, is she joining us? Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. Kyle? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, we are missing I someone. was muted, so I was... <laughs> So you let me just ramble on. <laughs> yes, we need Kyle too. <laughs> I'll text her. I also don't think we'll, today it's kind of kicking off a, some new members come in, kind of kicking off soon, a new year. So today is more maybe a planning. I don't think we'll take up the whole hour today. So if we start a little late, um, not the end of the world. I really do my best to our new committee members to make sure that we don't go over an hour um, and if possible, it's nice to end a little bit early, but definitely my, do my best to not go over. Oh, it. I don't know how yeah. to do that. So my screen keeps freezing up. Is anyone, is that just me or? I, I'm fine. So I'm fine. Yeah, mine's okay. You seem fine. Yeah. You look up here. For some reason, I'm not able to live stream on the village's YouTube, but um, this is being recorded, so it'll probably be posted up there in a day or two. So just you know, be mindful. This you know is going to be out in the public, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, noted. <laughs> Thanks. So well, is anyone from the town going to be? You know, Vic, Victor's not, I think Victor's typically here, but he's not going to be able to make it today. I don't think we're going to get Dan necessarily yeah. today. We usually do have Victor. Some, sometimes we get Mayor Murphy coming in too, um, but typically it's been Victor and Dan. It might be us today because I think they have another meeting that's going over at the same time. So yes. that's probably why we don't have a Victor and then Murphy and Dan. I think they have a v very important meeting regarding the planning department. Yeah. But just so you two know, typically we have nation usually Dan and Victor. And every now and then Mayor Murphy joins too. Victor is technically our trustee liaison. Let's get started. Um, why don't we get started? Like I was saying, um, so welcome to the December MECAC meeting. Um, I don't think we're going to take up the whole hour, but Let's just dive in now. Um, I did text Kyle just so people know. I'm sure we'll hear back from her shortly. Um, and thanks for sending the meeting minutes around. Um, people that were on the meeting last uh, last month, do you have any comments? I put some track changes in, um, additions in, I should say. Brendan, Sarah, anything else you wanted to add or adjust? Uh, notes look fine by me. OK. They looked all right by you too? All right, good, Sarah, thank you. We, we used to vote minutes in, uh, but we actually don't officially have to, but we do this just so our new committee members know. Uh, we just make sure that everyone's on board with them that's on the meeting and then um, send them over to Sally. So I'll send them as is to Sally and they'll be final and posted on the website. Good, and I'll go back to print. I'll, I'll take notes today. So committee members, I want to get um, a moment to thank um, and Sarah's gonna talk too, but to thank some of the committee members that are kind of rolling off the board. Um, first, we have Eddie. Eddie wasn't able to serve for a very long time. Unfortunately, the pandemic kind of sidetracked him. Um, but while he was uh, with us, he was a pleasure to work with. Um, he's definitely gonna be coming off the, uh, off the committee. And then um, Jim Desmond too. Uh, Caroline and Henry, do you know Jim Desmond? Catherine no. Desmond and wife? No, I, no, I didn't know him. They're very active in the village. They, they uh, have a deep appreciation for Long Island Sound, the environment. Um, Jim just has, you know, he's got other, other things that were taking up some of his time. So he'll be rolling off too, um, but he had been a long um, term committee member. 
Um, and it, they were really with Sarah, um, definitely with Sarah, the Desmonds really are why there's a Marine Education Center in the village of Mamaroneg. So Sarah and the Desmonds kind of got this whole thing moving. Um, and that was, Sarah, how long ago was that? I, I really don't remember. <laughs> it's like 10, it at least 10 years ago, if not maybe longer, I right? I don't think it was 10 years. Eight, I think I met with you all like maybe seven or eight years ago when I wasn't working with Save the Sounds, when it was an idea. We were at Greenwich. Yeah. We were just starting out. Anyhow, they really got the whole thing going. So I just wanted to say thanks to Jim. And if you see him around town, just say thanks, Jim. Um, and then Sarah, Sarah's, I won't talk for Sarah, but Sarah's going to be rolling off the um, advisory committee too. Sarah, you said you had a couple words you wanted to say. Oh, I just wanted to, to say goodbye. I'll be around. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's a, it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a, it's a good, uh, you know, history that, I mean, it started with a, a little closet and, and uh, a few little, little tanks. Yeah. And, um, it's pretty good. Is Kyle coming today or? I, I haven't. I texted her. I haven't heard from her. I hope she will. But you'll stick around through the meeting, right, sir? Yeah. And yeah. then is, um, I would just wanted to know, so Jim's coming off and, and, um, and then you, you, you're taking my, my place or just, uh, or that? Are no, you? I think they're just, I was reappointed as was Anne. And um, so we're staying on and then Brendan and Doug, who's not with us, will stay on. And we have uh, two more joining. So there is one more, there'll be one more open space that we could potentially fill. We max out at um, seven. Did I do the math correctly? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> we max out at seven. So I think we'll be able to take on one more person in the future if we want to, if we find that it's a need that we have. Um, so thank you, Sarah. And, and we'll see Sarah around. It's not like she's disappearing. No, I'm, I'm uh, pretty active at the library, so. Yeah. So I'm giving up on community service. But. No, very active. So then why don't we go around and introduce ourselves. Can I, um, Brenda, uh, Peter, can I interject for a second? Since you were course. talking about the, the committee list, I have yeah. the roster from Sally and I have you for seven people. This was the, the roster that was approved at the um, annual organizational meeting on Monday. I have, okay. I have Brendan, I've got Henry, Doug, Eddie, Edie. Yeah, Eddie's not going to, Eddie's um, expressed that he needs to come off the committee oh, for okay. business reasons. So then there's you, uh, Anne, and Caroline. Okay, so Eddie, I have to let um, Sally know is, going, is coming off. Yeah, please. I, I, I had emailed that too. Um, and he had emailed me. So if you could let her know and let the okay. trustees know, that'd be good. And that we do have a position then for person. No Thanks, problem. Rob. All right. So when we do, uh, so Brennan and I and Kyle met um, Henry and Caroline, but I don't think you've met Anne. So Anne, you want to? We'll just do a full around the around the committee. Anne, you want to do an introduction, please? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm mostly mute because I have workers leaving. It's a little crazy, it's but okay. I. I'm, my name is Anne Scar. I was just reappointed to serve the com committee again. I live in the village and uh, it's really great to be part and active with the Marine Center on any level that I can help support or provide to the committee. That's pretty much it. And I'm not sure what else we're supposed to, you want us to say, Peter. No, that was good. No, that, that, that's it. That was great. Just okay. kind of introduce yourself and interests. That's, that's all good. Brandon, okay. how about you? Nice to see you uh, both again, uh, Brendan Lewis. Uh, been on the committee for two years now. Uh, live uh, on the waterfront here on Guyon Creek. So obviously uh, anything to do with the ecosystem around here is very important uh, to me and my family. So I uh, look forward to working uh, again with the committee and also with our, with our new members. Welcome aboard. And uh, I, I could keep mine kind of brief because I know you met Brendan and myself too, but Peter Linderoff with Save the Sound. Um, the one non-village of Mamaroneck resident that's on the committee, they made an exception for me, the outsider, but feeling more and more like an insider. 
Um, I do work in the village and work very closely with a lot of the municipal staff and uh, the trustees and mayor too. So it's kind of my second home in a way. I've gotten to know it really well. I love the village and the harbor. It's an amazing harbor. Um, it certainly has its challenges, but it's also got a lot of great history and um, it's got a lot of good stuff going for it as well. I, I direct the water quality program at Save the Sound. So I oversee most of our, if not all actually, our water quality monitoring efforts and then also do a lot of advocacy work uh, legislative kind of helping out with our legislative and legal team as well. Um, and this is a great fit. I have an education background before I worked at Save the Sound. I worked for um, nonprofits doing education work, museums, um, curated a couple exhibitions. And one of the things that I think I mentioned at the committee fair, I managed the um, Bruce Museum Seaside Center for quite a few years and worked there as a naturalist. Um, so I have a a pretty good amount of experience with this kind of size um, environmental center. Um, I also worked at the Maritime Aquarium, so larger places as well, but really just love being on the sound and, and uh, education's fun. So it, it fits in with what I do at Save the Sound, but it's also just a personal interest of mine and uh, really happy to be on the committee and, and happy to have you both joining. Um, why don't we go to Caroline next, please. Hi, um, nice to meet everyone. I'm uh, Caroline Jarum. So I've lived in well, we, we sort of moved from the city to Larchmont originally when my son, so about five years ago, when my son was sort of just almost a year old. And then we moved to Mamaroneck shortly, shortly after that. So um, we live just up, just up from Harbour Island on Mount Pleasant Avenue. Um, so I've got a six year old and a four year old and uh, they love Kyle and they love the Marine Education Centre. So whenever we go down there, we always have to stop in and say hi. And I've just... I've, we spent a lot of time there and when I found out that there was like an advisory committee and we, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to sort of give back and um, try and be involved and support it. I think it's a great asset to the village. Uh, I really do. It's, um, it, it's really, it's been fabulous for my, uh, my kids. I've loved it and everyone I've told about it, love the program. So I'm looking forward to being involved and supporting however I can. Thank you. And I've heard, I've heard you and your family definitely frequent the Marine Education Center. So that's, that's outstanding. Yeah, sort of obvious from the accent, isn't it? Sort of a giveaway. <laughs> uh, Henry, please. Yes, thank you everyone. Um, good afternoon. My name is Henry Davis. I'm also a village of Mamaronek resident and I'm very excited to uh, be on the committee and to help in any way that I can. That was one of the main reasons why I wanted to volunteer. I'd like to give back um, to the village in any way I can. Um, I do have an education background. I work in higher ed. Um, I work specifically in research and social research um, and also grant writing. So uh, in any way that I can be a resource for others, uh, I'm all for it. I also have two small children. Um, one goes to Central and you might see him in the background. He does peek his head out a little bit. Um, but um, yeah, it's, I feel like it's really important to, and in any way that I can serve the committee, I'd be more than happy to. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you, Henry. Um, and a little bit later in the agenda, but not too far down, we're going to talk about kind of queuing up projects for the upcoming year so forward to some um, preliminary, not to put you both on the spot, but some preliminary ideas you might have um, for projects we can kind of collectively work on and maybe some things you could bring to the table too. Um, before we do that, unfortunately, I don't know if Kyle's going to make it. She's got a track record of attendance, but she might be getting caught up with something. Um, just looking at the agenda, we talked about changing the frequency moving into the new year. So we typically have met once a month, which I, I, I feel, and, and the committee members, it's probably a little bit much for the amount of work that we do. Um, Brendan made a really good point in that we uh, start meeting every two months. So our next meeting will be in February, kind of following that kind of, uh, it's in the agenda. It's tentative, tentatively scheduled for February 10th, but I really, we're going to need to move the time. So we'll, we'll go to meeting every two months. Um, and if we need to meet in addition to that, we just have to give, you know, a notification to the village. I'm sure we can hold special set, whatever, um, or even side meetings like subcommittee meeting, but Wednesdays at four have worked pretty well for people, but um, Doug, one of our, our members, um, we really want to have at the meetings, um, can't make this time. So does anyone want to throw out a time or two that works well for them? And then we can kind of do a quick kind of check of calendars. It, it should be a recurrent for me. The only way I can really make it work is like first Monday or Thursday. So I always know 
and then I can send out um, calendar holds for everybody. So it, it just is there for you. But for me, I need to schedule it in advance the best I can. We don't, we don't have to set it right now. If there's something I'd like to use, I personally have filled out so many doodle polls in the last six months that I, I, I don't know if I could handle another doodle poll. Um, there's when to meet and some other tools, but um, I don't know, Brendan, you tend to know what's going on with Doug in general. Do, do you, you guys kind of work in a similar. Yeah. I, times I think outside of like, you know, quote unquote business hours would probably be the most appealing. Um, okay. I hate to push everybody into the evening, but if, you know, we do like a five thirty or six o'clock, I think that would have a higher hit rate. I'm not intimately familiar with Doug's schedule obviously, but uh, I think that probably is the largest deterrent is it's taking place during business hours, air quotes. Yeah. I'm okay with meeting. Um, and and, it, and to that point, it might make sense to just meet at six mm -hmm. to give people time. Let me get that in the notes. Are um, our new board members, Ann, uh, Ann, Ann, okay with that? Yes, I'm fine with that. I would six o'clock. That sounds great. I wonder, I wonder um, if we could just stick with the second Wednesday because we've been holding that for a few years now and just move it to like six o'clock. Yeah, the day is no problem for me at all. So I like that. Why don't I see how that works out with Doug? And then um, there may be another yeah. meeting at the, um, at the, oh. Regatta. I mean, you've got to find that's out. A, that's a good point, especially when we can start meeting in person again. Um, Rob, do you have, do they have a tree committee meeting. I think you're right, but I thought it started at seven. No, I think it's um, at five. Uh, it's let five. me check the village calendar. We're talking about, I'm sorry, we're talking about February? Well, the second Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. Second no, Wednesday. Oh, you may as well just check every of every month at 6 p.m. Uh, that seems fine. I mean, you're usually on the second Wednesday of every month at three. The planning right. board is at seven, um, but we have a we have a handful of um, Zoom accounts. So I, I, I mean, I would just run that past Sally to make sure that um, yeah. she thinks it's okay. But I think it should be fine. Okay. I think Sarah's point was maybe someday we'll be able to meet in person again. Oh. Um, and if that's the case, we might not, you know, it might be a little tight with the uh, regatta. Right. But there's a, are there other meeting room spaces that uh, committees use? I think there are. The regatta has two meeting spaces, one large one and one small one. And then there's the, um, the CF, the courtroom at 169 Mount Pleasant. Um, which is I, a pretty good spot yeah, that's, too. A, that's a pretty big space. Um, but I imagine space. that the planning board will be using that space if, you know, if and when the in-person meetings do start up again, the planning board would probably use that space at seven o'clock. So we'd, we'd probably be fine in the regatta at six. Probably, All right. yeah. Why don't I check, touch, touch base with Sally and see if we can lock in 6 p.m. Um, uh, for the second Wednesday every other month. I'm not the quickest typer, so give me a sec. <laughs> All right, good. All right, and so I, it was a couple of years ago, we talked about, you know, and, and projects that the committee could get involved with, um, kind of work through some of those. Um, I thought it was a pretty help storming kind of thought we'd bring that up now, especially since we're about to go into the new year and kind of queue up some projects that might be good for this year. Um, and even, you know, areas that don't involve these three things that are listed in the agenda um, being advertising, marketing, comms, which um, just so our new members, that's usually Brendan and Doug. Speakers, adult learning has been Ann, and then education has typically been me, Sarah, and Jim. Um, 
education in itself gets, gets pretty broad. Um, we talked about doing some standard connections and, and such, but it, it seems like special projects actually should get lumped in there as well. Um, so why don't we start from the top and then Caroline and Henry, please feel free to jump in because it's nice to have some new blood and kind of just bring some new concepts to the table for projects sure. that we can just queue up today. It's not like we have to go into great detail on them. Um, get them on the agenda and then start thinking about like ways to approach them. Starting with marketing and um, comms though, I've been in touch with Brendan. Um, one of the projects that's come up on the agenda is a nutrient bio extraction project using sugar kelp. So if that didn't make any sense, it's using seaweed to take it out of the water and save the sound is involved in a pilot um, for New York state. I've been talking like, yeah, it'd be great to get everybody out in the winter. Um, I guess what I meant by that is more like February once the kelp is actually growing a little bit more, but I shot Brendan um, and thank you for following up with me, Brendan. I shot you the um, kind of blurb from the Save the Sound newsletter on the project, um, just so you have a general idea of what we'll be pitching. And, and I think I mentioned to you too, we'll probably do a press release. So when we do that, I, I'd love to get you in touch with our communications team. And then we could do like a joint press release. Um, which I can't see why anyone on, on our end is, would have any issue with that. It's kind of a project that I'm overseeing. I can just suggest it. I'm sure we'll be in good shape, but it kind of leverages both of our like village comms and then save the sound comms and we might get some good reach and it could be fun to get the press out and to get Brendan out. He, he said he'd like to get out uh, with Kyle, myself, and um, we're working with um, Marine Services, which is a Western Cito, which is also in the harbor. So we're able to go with a local outfit for the moorings and the buoys for the kelp lines. It's going out by Hen Island. Do you both know where, you know where Hen Island is, I think, right? So Hen Island's outside of the harbor. It's kind of like, it's where Milton Harbor and Mamaroneck Harbor come together before you go into the open sounds, kind of at the end of both channels. And it's, uh, it's this great community of people that have, you know, homes out there. They've agreed to give us access to their underwater land rights. And that's where we'll be running a hundred feet of this seaweed um, for a nutrient extraction project, which is beneficial in lots of ways. And I won't go into super detail now, but just to be clear, I'll get you in touch, Brendan, with the comms team. And uh, we, could, we could work together, I'm sure, on getting some press out there and kind of doing something with the MEC too. I'd love to, it's too bad Kyle's not on now, but I'm sure she'd be up for this, kind of look at some education programming around the project um, and see if there was something that could fit in with what she typically teaches at the center. Great. Yeah, I look forward to talking to the comms people. We can put together a plan pretty quickly. I think all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. I think they'll appreciate. How, you know, we have an extensive team, but it'll be nice to bring someone new into the mix to um, local. So, marketing and comms too. So I forget where we left the uh, the train. It's just been on my mind we have to do it. But remember, we talked about getting like signs up at the platforms, and people aren't. I know people aren't really. Well, some people are. Some people aren't. The train kind of whole thing has been important now, obviously, because we're not looking for a lot of foot traffic. What do you think about that, Brendan? Is that something we should think about kind of getting into play? Uh, you know, I think um, there is probably inventory right now with ridership being down. So if we get in, we can get in. I can give another whirl uh, on contacting with the agency that MTA uh, contracts with. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think it's one of those that died a little bit because no one was getting back to me, frankly, because yeah. why would they give away stuff for free if they are still trying to fill inventory? Uh, but, yeah, let me let me try another round with uh, with the MTA's advertising agency. If not, we can look to leverage people to see if they might be willing to donate, quote unquote, inventory uh, that they have uh, for for our cause. I think that'd be good. And then was there Something else you were, I apologize, I don't have the notes in front of me. I think there was something else you were about where someone was thinking about donating some, uh, is that thing that was train, train based? Sorry, you broke up there. I couldn't follow I think you. A couple of meetings back, you had mentioned the, the potential, like uh, someone had offered to donate some marketing space. Was that for the, um, the train platforms and the MTA or was that a different project? Yeah, no, no, uh, that, that was more of a wish if we could find people to donate. Uh, inventory for the platform. Great. So yeah, let's look back into it, you know, hopefully with the vaccine coming out, maybe my next season um, and people, you know, being responsible, maybe we'll have a little bit more of an open center for the general public again. It'll really benefit, you know, if we put some places up, it's 
but, but you know, it'd be good to look at it for next season. All right. Anything else on marketing and comms that you think might be lined up? We talked about press, bringing in more press, maybe with this project and other ways. Anything else yeah, we should up for the upcoming year? We're looking at, uh, I'm looking at things uh, kind of along three matrices, if you will, uh, event-based uh, comms, trend-based comms, and personality-based comms. And the event base is like, do we get a new screw down to, you know, the, the water robot, if you will. That's kind of like a neat little interesting story. Trend-based stuff is if there's anything related to kind of environmental issues all up and down, we can add our voice as a, as a shore town. Um, and then the personality stuff, you know, we've, we've got a great asset with, with Kyle. So are there things that we can do to help augment, you know, the great work that she's already doing um, and, uh, with the press already? So those are the kind of three things that we're looking at and formulating an overall kind of comprehensive plan for the rest of the year. So we'll uh, develop that a little bit more finite as, as, uh, as we launch into the new year. Nice. Yeah, that'd be great. Let me get that in the notes. Um, and then for our new, uh, for our new members. So Brandon, you not, you didn't meet Doug. You'll meet him in February. Cause we'll make sure we do it outside of regular business hours. He's yeah. And I was raising my hand just regarding the marketing I brought up at the last meeting. When you come off a of 95, there's no signage zero. That sign that was always there on Fenimore is still not there. So um, is there something we can do or who we could speak about getting that up? Unless you think it doesn't matter. No, I liked that sign a lot. Actually, I think it came down because I see it all the time coming back up from where we um, do a lot of our work in the Bronx. Uh, who would we get in touch with? It? Will you reach out to Dan Sarnoff and, and Kyle, specifically Kyle. Yeah. And maybe Dan Sarnoff and just ask about that signage. Yes. I think you mentioned it came down for a short amount of time or for an interval of time because there's something else that was happening at the harbor. But you're right, it's been a while and uh, it could be beneficial to get it back up there. I, I think the new village manager changed that whole. I mean, so I think there was a consistency of, of desire because all the signs are changed all over the place that says, you know, clubs and, and uh, harbor and et cetera. And there, all the signs, when he came in, he, he changed everything. So I think he'd be the person. Dan would know that too, but. So email Jerry, Dan, and Kyle. Jerry, Dan, and Kyle, you want me to do that? I'm sorry, yeah. my computer's freezing. I'm gonna get the technical issues resolved by next meeting. <laughs> That's okay, yeah, if you could, okay. please. You could put me on there too. Okay. Um, but Jerry, Jerry, Dan, and Kyle together and just ask them about the sign. And you might wanna just say, you know, being an advisory committee, um, we advise if it would work to get it back up there at some point. It was a very visible sign, um, certainly. Thanks, Anne, for bringing that up. So advertising market is not really my thing, but Henry and um, Caroline, do you want to weigh in a little bit on that? I wonder if communication, um, just uh, Henry, I know you've worked in the um, kind of the social data realm. Uh -huh. And besides the grant also mentioned kind of like surveys and, and things like that. And when you mentioned that fair, I think I brought it up to our committee actually at the last meeting. I think that could be a real idea um, to survey our, um, when we have the ability to, again, like, you know, maybe on the site survey, but then also follow surveys. Do you have any thoughts or recommendations that to kind of increase user experience at the center? Well, and just I to keep repeating what we do. I, you know, the one thing that I do have experience in is holding online focus groups. And um, if there was a way, I mean, that also ties into advertising and if you're trying to get people's feedback, but I find that they're very useful and they're very helpful, um, especially to see how to communicate effectively to people. Um, in one of the projects I did, there were, it was very surprising that you know, the uh, organization that we were working with thought they were really getting all this information out to people. And most people said, well, I'm not really on social media. I'm on, you know, I, I rather just see a sign or a flyer, you know, they looked out more for that word of mouth. So we found that, you know, it, it's having these online forums really do help generate ideas, especially learning people's habits and 
in regards to how they view something, how they view the center, um, how they view, um, you know, effective communication, what speaks to them. So maybe even hosting an, an online forum um, of, of townspeople, village, you know, villagers to see what they would be interested in or their perceptions. So, I mean, that might be one way to, uh, to have a, you know, a detailed plan or to get one in place. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. What was the terminology? I heard the online forum, but what did you say before that? Oh, um, I feel like it's a quiz. Uh, let me say, I, I focus, oh, I, online focus, focus group. groups, focus groups, focus groups. Yes. Online. Okay. Yeah. Online. I love, I, I like, yeah, not a quiz at all. No. <laughs> uh, focus groups. It just, you said it and it, I slipped. Uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, and one that we could definitely do, you know, via Zoom, I'm sure the village would be happy to help let, well, I think we probably have to, but we'll use their account and webinar kind of structure. That's something you'd be up for working on? Absolutely. I, th I think Kyle would be on board too, seeing that it's, you know, looking to improve and kind of just get an idea of the perception of the center uh, as a whole. That would be great. So you, you'd recommend that over like kind of a standard traditional kind of like fill-in survey um, or online survey, or do you send those like as part of the process? I would actually do both. I mean, uh, I'm used to mixed methodology. So I find that the, um, sometimes a focus group will even inform the survey. So um, I, I would say not one or the other, but if you can do both, uh, that's even better. Get that in the notes. That'd be a great idea, you know? Any organization really should be looking at ways that they can continue to, to grow, but also just figure out how people perceive them. I think yeah. that terminology, that was an important point too. Like how do people see this place now? And like, where do they see maybe it could go? That'd be great. I, I think not to speak for Kyle, but I think she'd be up for working with this committee on something like that. That'd be great. Especially if you, you know, you have a field of expertise, you yes. can kind of help guide <laughs> the process. That would be incredibly helpful. Nice. Um, I don't, I don't think now's a, a good time. It might tie in with that. Amanda, but I know the um, the education center is very focused on like uh, education for children, which is great. But I wonder if like if there's a, a a market for it or if people want it, if you could start introducing like adult education, like through the village, like maybe I don't know to get people involved in citizen science or just educate the adults, because like I know. My kids really love it, but sometimes I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. And like, you know, I want to sort of do it too. And like, I don't know if that might be a good way to get um, more um, more adults just involved with the village and looking after the sound and sort of interested in that in the marine environment and how we can sort of protect it and sort of move forward with that. But that might be something, you know, with the, so with the focus groups and the sort of surveys, if there's a need for it, or like maybe it's a, just a one-off on a Saturday. I know Kyle's already pretty busy with her education efforts with the with the you sort of with the kids but no I think that's a fantastic, fantastic um idea. and then the other thing I I know she sort of works with um the Westchester Children's Museum and um and some of the preschools and things as well but I wondered if there's any I mean this is a lot of work for one person maybe we need to you know <laughs> like anyway um but I wondered if there's any uh interest or might be a good idea to try and link up with the school district I don't know how that would work like she being she is linked up with it very much she is. oh okay so she does already okay I didn't know that yeah yeah oh okay yeah she does she has kind of set programs with certain grade levels and oh okay great yeah I don't have them off the top of my head but um, for school programming, I mean, you're right, she's one person and she does yeah. have volu volunteers and interns and such, but she tends to be, she does a great job across the board. So this isn't like she's doing a good job here. She's not doing a good job here. But I think the adult education element in itself is something where this committee has chimed in about in the past and somewhere where we could help just because she is one person. Um, and seeing that we're, we like to all think we're adults, at least we're all adults. Um, we can kind of maybe volunteer our time to help with that specific type of effort. Yeah. Um, I love the I citizen science. Would, yeah, go ahead. I don't think it would need to be sort of like a, you know, weekly thing or anything. It could just be, it's something that happens a couple of times a year, like yeah. on a weekend or something that you just sort of invite people down and, and get people more. It doesn't need to be an intensive, like onerous task necessarily, but yeah. Oh, I, I would agree with you a hundred percent. 
Um, one of the things we're talking about, and Ann, maybe you could, you could work with Ann on this, and we're going to get to it in a moment. I actually put what you were talking about in this section on speakers, adult education, um, is just having like one or two speakers a year geared for adults. Um, and that's something we were working with something with a professor from a researcher actually from Woods Hole. Um, and it turned out that he had been kind of a, it wasn't working out for scheduling purposes. Brendan's going to be touching base. I don't know if you've done that yet, Brendan, with a friend of yours, a professor at, was it Lamont at Columbia? I no, no, he, uh, he's up at the uh, University of New England. Um, oh, that's right. So I, tra I traded notes to him. He said he's going to check his calendar over the next couple of months. He's got some big papers and stuff that he's working on, but he was receptive to it. Yeah. So maybe that's Caroline somewhere where you could work with Anne. I'm sure Anne would I'm not going to say no. <laughs> and you guys can kind of work and like get, so Brennan's got an idea, but also just kind of scour around and look for some other speakers, trying to keep it somewhat Long Island Sound focused if you can. And of course, Long Island Sound, I mean, the Atlantic Ocean is connected to Long Island Sound and so is the East River and it fits and so is the Hudson. So, you know, in some ways you can kind of look at it in that way and go through, sorry, my dog's barking at the UPS. He's my fearless guard dog. Um, We've all been there. <laughs> but um, it, it could be a good idea. So maybe, I'll, and we don't need to chat about it in detail now, but maybe touch base with Ann. Um, yeah. And then you two could talk about Lupin Brendan because he's working with this one speaker. But let's get like three or four maybe on a list and then start seeing what sticks and we can schedule one or two of these a year is one more than we're doing now, right? So I think it'd be great to get one in. Yes, yeah, Sarah. Um, I was going to mention this. Um, so and that's that that's all i'm going to say but the uh, there's a, a, a seaweed company they actually grow seaweed this is a started by a, a korean guy who uh really was trained in korea and he's brought the stuff back and he's he anyway he has makes a product from it but he's also doing seaweed in long island sound and he has uh his his um, he's based in uh, he lives in California, but his his company is based in Boston. And he said he'd send somebody down, or I'm sure he would, you know, be willing to do anything virtual about the whole seaweed, what they're doing with it. Yeah, that'd be great, right? And then Caroline, also we could connect. You'll have my email, and mm -hmm. you know we could work together. But the seaweed, it's definitely it would be great to learn more about I think that would bring a lot to yeah the it does I don't know if anyone chimed into the webinar I, Mayor Murphy did I was on a webinar with some seaweed specialists and I gave my short little five minute talk on our pilot that's queued up but um I think that could be a theme to try to work with in the upcoming year um and kind of bigger picture it can make for a great food source um it could be used for agricultural products like uh, macronutrients on agricultural crops, like in upstate New York. So get the nitrogen from the sound, get it back to the upland and you're kind of removing nitrogen and you get the cycle going. Um, so, I mean, it's gonna have, it's, it's picking up a lot. Um, I could help get speakers for that one too. Dr. Yarish, Dr. Kim, um, and then Green Wave uh, is kind of the Connecticut, although they work in New York too. Um, the Connecticut kind of small farmer setup for seaweed. Um, they have that big operation on the Thimble Island, well, relatively big operation in the Thimble Islands. Um, so Sarah, if you could send your contact over. Um, yeah. It's not Professor Kim, is it? Uh, no, it's not Professor Kim. Okay, yeah, so send that over, please. And uh, I think seaweed sounds, would be great. Professor Kim sounds Korean as well. I think he is. Well, yeah. And Professor Kim's at UConn Stanford and it's, he focuses a lot on nutrient bioextraction with seaweed. Um, the, the thing about seaweed is you got to really make it like, it's, it's not quite the same as talking about like sharks or talking about like something big, like it, it's fascinating, right? But you got to get the right speaker in there um, to make it kind of captivating, I guess you could say. It's really fascinating stuff though. So Sarah, um, please send that over. Would you please sure. send it to um, Ann? And uh, I don't know if you have Caroline's email address yet, but send it to Ann to start and we can get kind of get this list of potential speakers going. Yeah. How do you all feel about file sharing? That's one of the things we haven't really done and, and I won't go out too far to say what we sh should do because I don't know what the village allows, but um, I think it'd be helpful to set up like a Dropbox or a Google Drive. Um, I'm fine with either one. Ro Robert. 
how's what's the village's thoughts on setting something like that up for sharing folders in a committee? I think it's uh, fine. I mean, uh, as long as your meetings are you know out in the open and um, you know we're being shared like this, you know, there I understand that there's like nitty gritty detail oriented stuff about file sharing and about you know people contacting folks and you know whatnot, but. Uh, and I'm certainly not an authority on this, this type of topic, but I, I think it would be totally fine. I mean, other committees have to get work done. And when you have to share files with each other, like, yeah, it's a reasonable thing. Okay, good. We can get a final answer on that, but, um, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I think we need that. I, I'm surprised. I, we haven't talked about that in the past uh, for things like a growing list of speakers and it's in one central place and people can just add to it um, and whatever else, wherever else it may go from there. Are there any preferences? I mean, I know, I don't think we have any federal employees here. They have trouble with uh, Dropbox, but I could do Google. I know Drive that, um, like I know um, the rec department many times uses we transfer. Um, I don't that's know the that one, one that that's the one that comes to my mind uh, immediately. There are a couple I, of other ones. I think Google Docs is sufficient. We're not going to be, you know, we transfer is like for really big files, and I don't think we're ever going to have massive files that we're going to be going back and forth. Yeah, so Google, I think Google Drive, Google Drive's kind of good too because you could set up and we could. I I, I believe. I don't want to go too far <laughs> you never know with municipal boundaries but i think we could set up like a, a mecac a gmail and just use that as the gmail account linked to google drive and then like let the village have all the you know uh, cliff in the i the director of it for the village cliff yeah thank you i would just run everything past him to make sure that uh, he he gives like kind of the final okay on these things. So. Yeah, IT blessing, I got you. Yeah. IT approval for a MEC. AC. I think that's gonna be helpful. Gmail.com. I'll do that. Cliff Kazes, C-A-Z-E-S. Wait, how do you spell his last name again? C-A-Z-E-S. Yes, that's right, Kansas. All right, great, I'll do that. I'd like to go back for a second. I thought um, Caroline's idea about like an adult education program is actually kind of really neat. I think it's a, a fun potential thing for, for adults. Um, I know we're not supposed to mention the fundraising word here as part of our official duties, uh, but I do think there might be something that we could do with the friends of that you know could raise money while also educating. So, um, you know, it just, just something that kind of came into my mind because I do think it's a, a wonderful opportunity. It could be a, a another wonderful opportunity to activate some additional levers for for the uh, center. Well said. Always careful, right? <laughs> uh, let me get that touch base with friends of the MEC to incorporate. How about we just say to incorporate their efforts with this one? Can I could, could jump in on that one too? <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, when when we were running it just as a volunteer a group of volunteers, when we were we were running um, different themes during during the weekend, people would come down and, and all of a sudden they completely leave their children looking at fish and go follow a leader, you know, walking around doing a tree walk and, and, you know, there's a bird walk on once a month. And then there was a big connection with the, there's that little house in the, the first school that's right there on, on the, the post road and walking to that. And then, I mean, the whole thing was to combine the, the historical aspect of the village as well as the Marine part of it, but people just loved it. And, uh, it just it emptied the center whenever we we had we had a couple of these, and um, it was very successful. Sarah, how can I get that in the notes? Kind of um, a historic program for adult, right? Historic history. Well, uh, it was really more the natural history. Use the word natural history because it is very interesting to to know about 
what you know how how the those harbors were dredged and and all the rest of it and the historical society had has a lot of photographs of of the harbor before it was the way it is now and they were willing to 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 you know put some of them up in the rec center and in the you know in addition i'm not saying that that they wouldn't love a walk on the on the beach or you know a marsh walk or something in fact, they oh, but I love that idea. I think that's great. And the nice thing about something like that is it's more COVID friendly too, honestly, where you could get people out and main smaller RSVP list maybe, but, um, and do things like that and get people doing kind of fun activities in a safe way. That's, that's a good idea. I know I'd go, I'm, I'm, I, I love the history. I don't, I'm, I'm in no way a specialist on it, but going back and look, I mean, like director shipyards itself has a pretty and like that kind of general shipyard history of the harbor, not just director, I didn't, but just the general use of the harbor, like by the Navy and other, it wasn't, I mean, it's got a pretty deep rooted history in shipbuilding and, and having like large draft vessels come in. Um, it, still it still does, it still, it still does. It still does, yeah, yeah. It still I does, mean, of course. Um, so yeah, that'd be great. Maybe we could even get some of the shipbuilders to talk a little bit during it too, it'd be fun. Thanks, Sarah, it's a good idea. John Pritz, who is the chair, I think he's the co-chair of the Mamaroneck Historical Association, is the village historian. Um, his uh, contact information is up on our website. Okay, one sec. Give me, give me the name again. John, J-O-H-N. Yep. Pritz, P-R-I-T-T-S. And his, yep. his mother, his mother was uh, Gloria, right? I don't know about his family history. Oh, well, yeah, his, it, well, it, uh, his grandfather was head of the WPA that did all the dredging of the harbor. Oh. So he, he's very much the- He's the, an his, amazing resource of- yeah, 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 he grew up with it. <laughs> yeah. And there are a lot of people who knew Gloria very well. I, I She's probably dead. I, I was working with her uh, when, when when I, that's how I got the information that I have about, about the harbor. But there's a wonderful photograph of the, of the beach in the, T, the TD bank uh, as you leave Mamaroneck. It's a fabulous photograph of old, old Mamaroneck. Back when it was a marsh or what? Hmm? Back when it was well, a marsh? It's, it's when it was a, the first beach. That's so not, the, not the way it is now. It's quite, Quite great, wonderful bathing suits with the. Yeah, I'm right. sorry, I'm talking too much. <laughs> oh, come on, it's good. It's a, it's, Leaving you with all planning. sorts of ideas. I just, I just put in John's email address. And yeah, the, thank yeah. you. Can I put that in the notes that we're publishing, or is that a no? I'm going to put them in here. It's probably it's on a, the website. It's a Vomney. It's a Vomney one. Yeah, it's publicly available on the site. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Rob chiming in here today it's been very helpful well, that could be of some help yeah good so uh, Peter, yeah. while we're on the subject of that would it be good to ask john maybe to do a talk yeah of course you know and then leading into it i mean i wasn't sure are we still pausing until we can not have to Interesting. She paused up right when she said pause there, didn't she? <laughs> there you are. Hold on. Yeah, we lost you for a second there, Ann. Um, are you saying a guided talk like on the at the harbor itself? Oh, she froze up again. I think that's something, Caroline, I think that's something you should talk with Ann about in this adult and in this adult kind of stuff. You guys could plan something like that. To loop in Kyle, of course, yeah, and yeah. just see. Um, but I, I yeah. yeah, I mean, it's about winter. Not that I mind trudging around in the winter, but it might be good to do it when it warms up a little bit. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, when it warms up. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking we'll do something when it's warm, warmed up. Yeah. Like late spring, early summer is a great time for something like that. I would think. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll make, I'm going to touch base with Cliff on making that Google drive and we can start kind of getting these things in a shared repository like area and then adding ideas like that to this adult learning section. I wanted to just emphasize what Caroline said too about what Henry mentioned with the focus groups and the surveys, 
we can all think about like what we think is going to be interesting and we should go ahead and pursue that. But I'd love to see those come off the ground sooner than later to kind of help guide us in this kind of newer offering that the center could be doing. Um, and then like really tap into what the community's interests are um, and the MEC, IC, MEC community's interests. So I'd love to, maybe by the next meeting, um, Henry, you could give us like a little bit of a, your suggestions on scheduling and some other such points so we could really make it happen. Yeah, maybe do focus groups, do like three part series about programming and about perception. So I can come up with a, a draft of that and a couple of questions, semi-structured questions for the focus group, just to see if it's great. worth uh, following up on. Yeah, I think that would be outstanding. I will be, but I think for all of us to see it would be helpful, Kyle, too. So yeah, if you could work a little bit on that for the next meeting, that would be awesome. Just the general structures of them. That would Sounds be really good. Awesome. Carolina and you, you're both going to touch base on kind of adult speakers. We still would love to do something in the winter. Don't get me wrong. Um, we want to make sure we have plenty of lead time. So if it's Brennan's contact, great. If it's a different one, maybe the, the professor slash seaweed specialist, Sarah brought up great, but you know, maybe start talking about that again and seeing we, we would do it via zoom via like a webinar. Like, you know, that's obviously how we would do it. Um, and then let's give ourselves at least a couple months, I would suggest, for advertising and to let our team really get the word out. Um, but shooting for something in February is certainly doable, I would think. Um, but since we won't be meeting again until February, I'd really, and I'll do my best to help encourage that too, but just start talking about it soon. And then um, we can try to lock something in. All right, great. Um, that kind of covered education. Did you have anything else on adult speaking learning you were thinking, Caroline? No, no, not not right now. But I'll give it. I'll give it a bit more thought. Okay, great. Yeah, that that'll be. That's going to be a good facet, I think, of the center. Yeah. Um, anything on other business people want to talk about before we wrap up for the night? No. All right. So I, I took meeting notes this time around, so I'll get them out, and they definitely have some uh, next steps for people to kind of pick up on. Um, we'll do our next meeting. I'll put it in tentatively for um, six p.m. on that same day. So please go ahead and mark your calendars off six p.m on, um, I think it's the 10th. And then I'll touch base with Sally to make sure that that's actually something the village is good with, with their general scheduling. Um, and welcome, welcome on board and looking Thank forward you. to kind of kicking off this new year with uh, some new faces. Sarah, I know I'll stay in touch with you. It's not goodbye. So um, I just want to say thanks again. Oh, I'll see you again. Thank that you, was so interested, I might not resign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right, I don't know if she submitted her resignation um sounds good sarah you're always welcome to attend by the way even if you're not technically a, a committee member you can still attend the meetings yeah well, you, have get an, you have to get an invite <laughs> well, you, well you know what i think i'm gonna jump in and correct me here but i think anyone can come in and then we can up like move them to a speaker yeah uh, all the meetings are posted on the village website and um you know that's kind of like the public url Sorry, I have a daughter who's yelling in the background. Um, but they can all, you know, people can log in and, um, you know, they're listed as an attendee, but then whoever is the IT person that's assigned to this meeting can bump them up to be a panelist. Yeah. So, Sarah, I'd really encourage you to check in on it. And you're welcome to contact me and be like, hey, I'd like to come in and talk a little bit. Or you're welcome to join anytime, Sarah. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Let me save these notes so I don't lose them. Um, I just want to say thanks, everyone. Um, happy oh, holidays. Happy, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.